Really? Yes. Really? Greetings and welcome to another episode of Rain Over Me, the Atlanta Rain Podcast. My name is Shy Guy. I'm your host today. And as always, I am joined by my main man, Okedo. Are you are you joining me in mourning right now or, or like how are you feeling after after last week? Um well last week didn't happen. I there's just a blank space in my memory. <laughs> um no, nah, it's it's uh you know, I, I think I tweeted out something like this. Basically, you know, if if you're a fan just when you win, that that doesn't make you a real fan, man. This is we every team can grow from a loss, so uh, we have a lot of growing to do. Let's just leave it at that. I I I think that's that's pretty well put after after the the debacle that was last week, but I guess let, let's jump right into it, and we're gonna kind of switch things up a little bit this week in terms of format, just because we are you know approaching the the end of our stage here. We've got two games to to cover going into next week, uh, so we'll we'll probably be a little less detailed in our our breakdown than normal. Uh, but let let's start with just some kind of overarching thoughts uh, about. The, the game against the gladiators this week what kind of stood out to you uh you know from this one um I, you know i'm gonna start with not even atlanta i'm gonna talk about the gladiators because they looked fantastic they looked amazing i mean we saw the gladiators in week one uh show up and play pretty well but since then they've kind of dropped off uh and uh they didn't have decay uh, decay turned decay turned 18 uh, i think uh uh, I think he turned. Time. Yeah, I think he. I think he was only eligible starting in week three. So this was yeah. only like his second, maybe third week with right. you know, actually playing in the lineup. So I, I definitely think it's like understandable that they were getting off to a slow start. But it, it seems like they've definitely found their their footing at this point. Yeah, and and the Gladiators were were huge last year. They were they were by the end of the season they were one of the top teams. Um, they went to the playoffs and and didn't quite make it through, but they they were a great team and they haven't changed that much. So a lot of people were surprised they weren't performing well, and it seems like they just kind of found their stride. And it was rough. <laughs> I mean, for them, it, it came at the the perfect time because their season was a little bit you know going off the rails the the first few weeks if it had continued if they had gone 0 and 2 last week they would be you know being mentioned in the same breath as a team like the the valiant the other la team right now yeah. who are you know sitting down at the bottom of the standings ha- just having fired their coach that you know i i don't think gladiators was going to go to that kind of drastic place but they they definitely were were kind of backs against the wall right now and they they came out absolutely swinging from the jump like they were just all over the rain well they they went from having what one win to being ranked like i've seen them on top five lists i've seen them considered one of the best teams in the league after last week's performance now i don't quite agree i think that there's a level of of streakiness that like it hasn't been proven Mm -hmm. that they can can keep that that rhythm up but as far as pure talent and skill their ability to dismantle the rain last week yeah they're a very talented team that seemed to have been able to put some things together most definitely i mean i i think it's they're starting to realize their potential. I, I think we, right. we we saw this last year where like they were were forced to play around Fisher so so much. Like he was the centerpiece of that team once he we got he got in there and turned things around for them. That I think it it takes some time for them to adapt to. Now they're not necessarily playing around their main tank as like the the center point of the team. Now it, it seems to have shifted over to Decay being that star player. So I, I think it's just taken them some time. Now that they've done it, they are incredibly scary. I mean, beating the the rain like they did uh, definitely puts you in the the conversation for one of the most dangerous teams in the league. Even if you know the consistency hasn't quite been there yet to call them maybe one of the best teams in the league. Well, that, that's one of the things about this season is that, you know, there there are some clear distinctions about like, you know, the one and two team like Vancouver and New York is up there. But against Chengdu or Chengdu, like Vancouver showed some weakness. But it's like there's the first two teams and then there's the bottom two teams and everyone else could beat anyone else on any given day. It's it's there's so much talent parody in the mid ranks that it's it's insane. And yeah, Gladiators came out. Another thing is they um they currently are working without Bishu, who was a, a uh, instrumental in their communication. 
Um, but he has been uh, sick as far as I can tell. And, uh, but it, yeah, this seems like they've put some stuff together, but this is not a gladiator show. I do want to, <laughs> I do want to yeah, mention let- there wasn't a great, uh, performance by Atlanta. Uh, I feel like gladiator showed up and they were out for blood and Atlanta showed up and looked a little, a little sluggish, a little weak. Um, there were still some bright spots. I know that, uh, um, Masa had some big environmental kills and he got some good positional boops and, and things like that in. But for every one of those, there was a, a little bit of poor positioning in, in other plays. So Atlanta was looking a little bit um, uh, caught off guard. And when put under pressure, a lot of their uh, cohesion started to break down. Yeah, I mean, and you, you mentioned Masa. I think he did have a, a pretty solid performance. But I think the, the support line as a whole was kind of in my mind, like the biggest place where the, the gladiators were outplaying Atlanta because big yeah. goose was having himself a game. The goose and, was loose. <laughs> I mean, that, that dude was a, a monster and yeah. you no know, Shaz was, was his typical like stellar self, just picking people off. I mean, he, he had the, we, we aren't going to go into each individual map, but if you remember back to King's row, uh, the, the map opens off with, uh, Shaz just getting this long range uh, barrage kill onto to Kodak and it just like got the snowball rolling downhill and Atlanta just had like literally no way to stop it at that point it, w- it yeah. was kind of over uh, at that point it, it gave them such momentum that they carried through that map and then through the, the rest of the series as well yeah absolutely and uh, it, it's uh, again, yeah, just a combination of you know there was a couple good plays from Atlanta. Some some of the teams, uh, some of the team was playing well, but overall it was kind of an off day. And Gladiators just had like one of it, the best day I've seen. Like they were incredible, they were terrifying. And coming into this week, they were bottom five on pretty much every ranking. Yeah, so, for sure. In in terms of like upsets, I mean this this has to be up there as kind of one of the the biggest so far in the league. Just if you look at it in terms of power rankings, I mean. Obviously, Gladiators are a talented team, but a lot of people, I mean, you and I included, both had uh, Atlanta in our top five after week three and Gladiators down near the bottom. So uh, for for that, you know, it's a perfect example of the parody that we've talked about a lot already. Um, But I I do want to get your thoughts on one more kind of specific thing from this game. Um, And that was the the way that the Gladiators were making uh, the backline and specifically the the Zenyatta players dogman and kodak both kind of the the targets all night and really forcing them into to some kind of uncomfortable positions that you know made them use transcendence uh, at you know inopportune moments and i just want to you know hear what you have to, to say about that well this is it's kind of twofold because um as you mentioned there was a lot of pressure on the support line that caused them to make some some misplays and be out of position but this all came off of them also applying just dramatic amounts of pressure to the front line and just mm-hmm. ripping through poke post shields and just like he was constantly having to back off the supports were constantly having to struggle to keep him up and and keep the team up as the shields were disappearing and it was just such massive amounts of pressure but something specifically about the transcendence usage and i'm gonna i'm gonna credit this to uh, uh bench mob um uh, dave i don't remember his last name but uh, bench mob is, is well known he's got a website does a lot analysis for owl he wrote an article about transcendence usage specifically from the atlanta rain and how we have tended to be more aggressive with it we have instead of using it you know in goats it tends to be used to negate grav and whatever comes after grav grav bomb whatever um but atlanta has been using it more than any other team aggressively to to push and aggressively to uh to win fights early before not as a reaction but more of a as an action to push as an offensive ult and we have shown the most benefit from it like we have gained the most out of using it early like that so i think what happened was a lot of these ults even earlier in the season some of the ults i felt kind of came out a little early or they felt ill-timed but when you look at the actual numbers and statistics it looks like that is a strategic uh a choice to to win these early fights get those early kills and and win maps and i think when we went up against the gladiators we were expecting to be able to just pop the ults move in and and um 
uh, pressure them down. But the gladiators, A, they had seen that we had been using those aggressively. So when we popped them, B, they would just back off. They would kite us. They would absorb our push until the transcendence was done. And now we didn't secure a kill and we don't have anything to defend against them. So I don't necessarily think a lot of those were as big of misplays as we may assume they are based on the the general um, understanding of what Atlanta has been doing. But it was more of just the gladiators were punishing what they knew that we would do. Yeah, no, I, I definitely agree with that. Uh, to a, a pretty big extent, you know, gladiators disengages in this game were were really really crucial. It, it seemed like every time Atlanta tried to charge forward with one of those transcendences, they just weren't finding any value out of it. And you know, when you are using an ultimate like transcendence, it, it either has to be for you know that first application that most teams kind of use it for to save your teammates and to to save it in kind of a crucial moment with a graviton surge or something like that. Or you have to, you know, get value out of the aggressive style of using an Atlanta just wasn't able to do that, I think, in part because Gladiators were doing a good job of forcing out even earlier than Atlanta might have a, wanted to. Like, yeah. like the, the the best way you can use that is to kind of send Popo in aggressively, let him swing and take some damage and kind of follow up with that trans when he starts to go low. But more often than not, it seemed like Atlanta was like on the back foot and then they would use transcendence and then, you know, immediately try to surge forward. But they, they just weren't in the position to do that most of the time. Uh, so, I mean, I, I think that goes a long way to kind of showing you the the level of aggression that the gladiators were bringing to the table. And it, it kind of caught Atlanta off guard, I think. Yeah, absolutely. And But one thing I do want to point out, and one thing I do want to point out that kind of ties all of this together is that something we talked about earlier was that it took the Gladiators a, a few weeks to really find their footing. And this was, no one expected this to happen. Everyone expected Atlanta to kind of trounce them because of their previous performance. What that means is that no one, we didn't have tape. We didn't have tape of a good Gladiators team. We don't know what good gladiators look like, so we were preparing against a bad gladiators team and what we hear about in scrims, which Raucus actually said that the gladiators have been one of the strongest teams in scrims. They just haven't been able to put it together. But when you don't have footage of them performing live at such a high level, I mean, obviously there's other things you can prepare for, but it definitely seemed like one of our biggest problems is we were caught off guard and we failed to adapt fast enough because we have the talent, we have the ability, yeah. but no one expected gladiators to do that. Yeah. And gladiators have always been a team that does a really good job of like counter striding people. I mean, we, we even saw this in week one where they lost their, their opening match uh, to the, the dynasty, I believe. And then came back and immediately beat the San Francisco shock, which, you know, people consider one of the, the best teams in the league as well. So, they have shown the ability to kind of rise to this level and to, to play against a specific opponent before. It just hasn't been consistent at all so far this season. So, you know, it, it, it is what it is. You're, you're going to suffer some of those kinds of losses over the, the course of a long season. The, the question now is the, what is the response from the rain coming off of a, a week like this where, yeah, you, you got rolled, you got bodied, like they, they, they beat you and they beat you good. Like how do you come back from that in a week that has a lot of implications for, you know, where Atlanta winds up in the, the stage one standings when it's all said and done? Yeah, well, credit where credit is due. Uh, the, the players have uh, seemed to have a very um, uh, lighthearted approach to it. I know DeFran, it looked like, I think he gave hydration a hug at the end of it and everyone was smiles. And even DeFran on stream was like, I don't know why anybody's upset. We played fine. The gladiators just were insane. They were really good. Mm -hmm. So it seems like they, they are taking it well. Um, and going into this next week, I'll, <sighs> I'm a little more worried after that uh, that Chengdu Vancouver game. <laughs> you know, I am I am simultaneously more worried by that, and also I I am kind of willing to just chalk it up to like Chengdu is a complete and total wild card. Like I have literally yeah. no clue what that team is going to do week to week. Uh, <laughs> run and, Hammond. <laughs> I mean, they're yes, they they are going to run <laughs> Hammond. That is the one thing you can count on. 
but you know, as far as their performance goes, that was by far their their best showing of the entire season so far, even in a loss. Um, oh yeah, for sure. But I'm still not convinced that you know they are really a a good team in the the current meta. They still, uh, you know, for for all the hype that Among is getting, and deservedly so after that performance, I'm still not sure that he is like a good Reinhardt player. Yeah. I, well. Well. Real quick, before we move on to to Chengdu, are we? Is there anything else we need to say about the Gladiators? Because because frankly, I, there's not a whole lot. I mean, the one of the reasons we're not going map to map is because most of the things that caused the Gladiators to win and caused the Atlanta to lose were consistent across all four maps. So, um, just to kind of put a bow on that one, is there anything else you have about the Gladiators? Um. Not necessarily. Not not specifically about the the Gladiators or thing. I mean, I think they really showed us that they can be one of the top teams in the league. I'm, I'm interested to watch them going forward if they can maintain that level uh, sure, yeah. going into stage two because you know they're a dangerous team. Even uh, once, uh, maybe especially once we get out of the the goats meta, because we we saw a little taste of it on Anubis when they went over to that triple tank dive to to break through. Atlanta's like uh, Arisa Junkrat Widow composition. Mm. They are so incredibly flexible, and I, I can't wait to see more of Decay actually getting to play DPS heroes again because his Genji was kind of mesmerizing. Oh yeah, it was it was as bad as it was seeing it used against <laughs> at the rain. Like I, you gotta love seeing a Genji at this point, you know, like just in general. Um, but yeah, like the Gladiators, I think that. Um, while my official stance when it comes to how I'm looking at things and power rankings and stuff is they haven't proved consistency yet, my feelings behind the Gladiators are that I, I just have this feeling that they finally found it. They mm -hmm. they found that footing they needed, and we're going to see uh, in Stage 2 and moving forward, we're going to see a lot. Expect to see the Gladiators at the, the top of these lists rather than the bottom. Um, but yeah, sure. yeah I, I agree. But as far as, as, far as Chengdu goes, or Chengdu, um, Among is I don't think he's actually that great of a Reinhardt player. Uh, and I may get some hate for this. I don't think Bumper is that great of a Reinhardt player. I think Bumper is able to do what he does because the rest of Vancouver is so strong and can play around him. The same thing happened with Fraggy last year. Hyper aggressive, uh, makes some weird plays, some crazy charges, but his team is willing to go all in with him. So it catches people off guard and works. But I think that that ended up backfiring on them, and Emong was able to really exploit Bumper's weakness, and that's what caused them to be able to take Vancouver to a map five. Yeah, uh, I mean, I, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because this is definitely not a Vancouver Titans podcast. Right, uh, right. They, they, they do not even play the rain anytime soon. Uh, unless we, we meet in the they playoffs. That, that, could, <laughs> that could very well happen. We'll, we'll see. Uh, I, would, I would love to see that matchup. I, I do disagree with you saying that you know, Bumper is not That's fine. a great I, Reinhardt. Um, I, 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 do agree, <laughs> I do agree with you that he has some like big weaknesses in his game, and Chengdu just absolutely exploited the crap out of them. I could not believe the the play on their their game on Route 66 where he tried to go for the the like hiding or shatter mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and just got completely cut out. I, he does this every single game, and it's part of <laughs> what makes him great is his just like stupid amount of uh, aggressiveness. But uh, it it definitely leaves them open to some things. But that is uh, beside the point because we we are here to to talk a little bit about Chengdu, and I I do have to agree that I don't necessarily think uh, they are one hundred percent legit. I, I think that was a specifically yeah. tough matchup for Vancouver, um, who has already shown they can't or they aren't great at adapting to like those weird DPS heavy compositions. Right. Um. And you know, going into it, I am still fairly confident in. Atlanta, but I, I am by no means kind of excluding the possibility that Chengdu is just going to come out, uh, you know, blow the doors off the thing and, and actually be a legitimately really good team. Yeah, I, I agree. And I and to, to bring the focus, like you said, back to more of Atlanta over these other things is that um, 
I think that we are very adaptable. Uh, I think especially versus Paris, we showed that we understood their play style and what to do to shut them down. If you can divide their team play, that they're going to fall apart. And I think that um, even though Chengdu has a weird approach, I think that uh, Atlanta has been they, there's plenty of tape to study because I don't think Chengdu has been hiding much. I think that um, they happen to I, do, I, I think they're three three against Vancouver even surprised them. I don't think anyone <laughs> even them expected <laughs> to be that strong against a Vancouver three three. Um, but I think there's enough tape out there for us to know kind of what their general play style is. And for the, the, the goats comp that they played against Vancouver, there is now tape on that to know, okay, if we're shutting this down, they're, they're four DPS comp down and they move to goats, then we know how they're going to play that too. So prep work. I think we're good. I think we're good. Yeah. And, and I have to say, if Tundu has a good shot in this game, and I think they, they do have a shot. Uh, I think it comes from playing those DPS and the the wrecking ball compositions. Mm -hmm. I don't really expect them to to be able to pull the same trick twice. If you if you catch my drift in yeah. terms of beating an accomplished goats team at goats, uh, yeah. I don't see it it happening again against Atlanta. Now that it won't you know catch them off guard like you were saying. I have a feeling we're going to see. Um a lot of sombra goats uh or hmm. potentially snotes but something to shut down like if if they're going to be running that hammond then just throw one of us on sombra and prevent him from being able to get out and i think that will really help shut them down a lot so i i think we're going to show some of those kind of weird adaptability goats comps where you kind of reach out into the dps sphere a little bit um I am interested to see if they sub in uh, like Bacon Jack back in. He's been doing he's been doing great on damage as as has Genmu. I, I want to see that matchup versus uh, like in layer if we happen to have a, a sniper battle. Um, that that interests me to see how uh, he goes against someone who's actually been playing a lot of DPS and and kind of doing well with it this year. Um, so I, I'm interested to see what it what the Reigns approach is, whether or not we go with that you know, goats game with a little bit of edge to it to make them play into us or whether or not we go, all right, we know your game. We're going to play your game and we're going to outplay you at it. I, I don't necessarily see it going at all the way, like swing all the way in that direction. We are, you know, matching them with right, uh, right. wrecking ball and things well, like well, that. Well, but well, real could... quick, real quick. Let me, let, what I meant was that uh, we, we're not going to try to force you off the comp. Mm -hmm. We're going to understand that you're going to play it, and we're going to okay. play around what you're doing. Not I can see As that. much as I would love <laughs> to see us pull off a hunter's comp. <laughs> no, I, I don't see that happening, but I do, I do see myself more in the, the second camp in terms of um, Atlanta coming out and kind of counter stratting uh, Chengdu to an extent and n not letting them try to play their game because I, I think if they can force the the GOATs matchup, that tips things firmly in the, the direction of Atlanta. Yeah, I, I agree there. Um, yeah, I, I think that we may get caught off guard a little bit with their play style, but there's enough out there that mm -hmm. I, I expect us to have a pretty strong showing. Okay, so with that in mind, what 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 do you see the outcome of this game being in terms of your prediction oh, here? Let me. I, I I have a feeling that we are going to be a little bit nervous coming into this. Uh, I do think that we are going to take this to a map five. I I think that um, I could see it going three one, but I feel like. Uh, I feel like a few of the later fights in certain rounds might get a little bit scrappy and uh, Chengdu might be able to pull it out. So as much as I'd love to say 3-1, I just have this feeling it's going to go to a map 5, but I still think Atlanta's going to take it 3-2. Okay, the, this is a hard one for me because Chengdu has been all over the map in terms of like how their performance oh, yeah. has been. You know, their, their losses up to this point are you know they have won three one loss but other than that they've, they've only lost in 4-0 fashion until the that vancouver game this week uh or it goes all the way down to the wire to a game five there's not a whole lot of like middle ground with this team yeah, exactly um but i i do think that they have enough kind of gas in the tank that they can take a map um 
So I'm going to predict a 3-1 here in favor of Atlanta. Uh, now, in terms of which map that will be, I, I have no clue. They've been very good on um, control at times, but they, they got completely shut down against Vancouver in both of the, the control maps. So I'm not a, 100% sure how this one will go, but uh, I'll, I'll keep it kind of safe and, and say a 3-1 for Atlanta. Well, yeah, and and like you like you were saying, this um this matchup is such just a guessing game. So uh, you know, I, I can't really fault a three one, a three two, a four zero. It, it's it's so hard to tell, you know. For sure, for sure, they are kind of an enigma right now. Uh, they're playing completely different to every other team in the league, and different teams handle that so well. But we we don't have any footage of. Atlanta or you know most of their opponents playing against anything similar to what Chengdu brings to the table so it's it's hard to know how exactly they will react to that right exactly exactly all right so let's let's move on to the last game of the stage for Atlanta or hopefully not the last game of the stage yeah well the, the, regular, of the, stage. the regular stage uh, up against the Houston Outlaws Oh man, and this one's this one gets personal for me. I was a Houston fan last season before we had a uh, a team for Atlanta. So as I put in my my preview for this week, this one very much feels like uh, watching my current significant other and my ex fight about something. Where I just like it's just it just feels weird because I know players on both sides so well. Um, but I'm, <sighs> I'm kind of in the same boat, you know. Yeah. Honestly, I was I was a, a fan last year I, i've said it before already this season uh but probably the the best decision i ever made in overwatch was to stop being a houston fan yeah, um, it, yeah. that has been a, a very good call so far this season because they they stressed me out all last season and i can guarantee you they would have been doing exactly the same thing this year so i'm i'm glad to be to houston. be rid of them to an extent Houston is one of those teams that, like, I just always felt like they could be doing better. Like, they just <laughs> were just missing out on doing. I mean, and and their playoff hopes last year kind of speak to that. They just almost made it, not quite. But uh, Houston has has struggled this stage. Um, they have struggled a little bit with the comp. They got Dante in there, and that has helped them out a lot. But as far as as damage dealing goes, they have generally have Linkser on on Zarya in the 3-3 comp and he is a streaky flick god like he when he's on he's great with hit scan with hitting those widow headshots but as far as consistent tracking he's been struggling and uh they've had every win they've had it feels like they've really had to fight for you know pretty much and I mean on top of that the wins that they've had have not been against kind of the the top tier competition. I think their three wins at this point are Valiant, uh, Spark, and Mayhem, which is not exactly like a murderer's row uh, at this spark, point. Spark's okay, um, yeah, and 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 even the um, they did take uh, they did take Toronto to a map five in week one. You know, I mean they in, in week one. Fair. Before, before fair. Toronto, before Toronto very had fair. Echo, uh, before <laughs> Toronto was the the Toronto that we we see right now, uh, I, I don't think that was really indicative of what Toronto was um, at the time. So, I'm actually going to uh, go ahead and concede my point because that you, you made a very <laughs> solid point. Yeah, no, that's and they, I mean, and they the fact that like they are a veteran team and they you know got. Uh, they lost the the three two. They lost two three twos in week one against a brand new Toronto team and a Boston Uprising team who was playing a main tank at off tank. Oh yeah. Um. Was... So like they, I, I I don't think they have been very good at all so far this season. They have talented players. They look they've looked a lot better recently. Whenever they've played Spree on Zarya, um, and I think that is. Probably the answer if they are, you know, playing in a goat's meta. Uh, Links are just, you, I mean, you mentioned it. He doesn't really fit into this meta at all. Like he, he doesn't have a place. Well, when uh, they play Spree, everything goes well, but they keep trying to to allow for this this um f allow for flexibility in case he needs to jump yeah. off on a DPS player or a DPS hero. But just stop, guys. <laughs> it's, right. it's not working. It hasn't worked for four weeks. Um, they essentially lost two maps to Valiant, who are one of the worst teams. I, they lost one, and they tied another one, but I'm going to count that as a loss. If 
you know, tying a map against Valiant is not good. And yeah, it, it seems like they really want to win. They have the heart, but um, I don't want to say they don't have the talent, but I don't know where I'm going with this anymore. So <laughs> <laughs> they I'll, say it, for, I'll yeah. say it for you. They don't really have the talent. Like they, their problems from last year have not really been addressed. Like Dante covers up some of their, their DPS issues, but you know, they're That's a good way of putting it. it covers it up. They're still there though, but they're still there. Like Rockus is still not a, a top tier Zen by any imagination. And you know, the, the there's just a kind of disconnect with this team between um you know they they have a few really talented players but nothing quite fits together and this was the same thing that happened last year so yeah. i i i can't say i i think they have you know turned a corner or, or really changed a whole lot since then and you know what they've shown me so far this year does not make me at all confident in them if there there's one game this week that i am you know not afraid of it, it is this one yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm not really either. Um, now, the the one little tinge of fear I will put on it is that this is a very important game. This is a um, there's a chance it will come down to whoever wins this game gets into the stage playoffs. Like it, it, it's gonna be a lot on the line for both teams. Um, and uh, yeah, I spent like half an hour messing around with the Overwatch playoff maker, and th we only have two days of games left, and it is unreal the amount of teams that could still make it in off of realistic scenarios. So um, it, yeah, it could come down to a lot of pressure. That would be the only thing I would I would be concerned about. But as far as the actual raw talent, the coaching staff, player ability, I, I just Atlanta gets a win in all the individual categories. Yeah, for real. Um, and you know. Even on that last point of, of pressure, I, I think for the most part, we've kind of seen Houston crumble under the pressure over and over and over again. Yeah. Uh, yeah. More, so, more so than rising to the occasion. Now they, they are a different team. They've been there before. They know what it's like to, to play with a lot on the line. But, you know, I, I'm, I'm still not very confident in what that, that means for their actual chances. But we'll see. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not going to say it's impossible, but I, I am pretty confident in. Atlanta, I, I will still give this a 3-1 score in terms of my prediction. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I kind of just think that's a little bit of like the meta that we're in right now. It, it's hard to really, really dominate teams unless you're the Gladiators. Yeah, for sure. For <laughs> sure. And and uh, I don't want to talk about it anymore. No, um, it's, uh, it, yeah, it, it is. And, and I'm, um, I do think that they could take a map off of... Uh, uh, you know, good alt economy or something. They happen to play the alt game better one round or something. Um, what I really want to see is Erster on Junkrat take on Jake on Junkrat. I don't think it's going to happen, but that would be hilarious. Um, yeah, I, you're not, I, I'm, I'm sorry to break it to you, but you're not going to see Junkrat on both sides of the field, don't, I don't, don't think. Kill, not until stage two. Don't not until stage friends. two. Wait, <laughs> wait for stage two. It's going to happen. He, Can he you got imagine? his buffs. Are are we? Uh, do you know if we're play? Are we playing on Anubis uh, against them? I'm not sure what the the Double map check. pool is for for this. Week. No, we we, we don't actually have honest. we don't actually have Anubis against them. I was yeah. gonna say I, it would. Could you imagine the the fan reaction, the crowd reaction, if even if it's not double Junkrat, if Erster just continued to <laughs> down on a Junkrat? Uh, it would it would be phenomenal. I, yeah, I would. No, I agree. Right, I agree with you. Um, three one. I, I can. I see them taking a map off of. Um, not even necessarily better play, but anything could happen. Um, so uh, I do think Atlanta takes this handedly. And if Atlanta does what we both expect or what we're both hoping for and wins both of those games, if I'm not mistaken, that puts us at number three, the number three team in the league. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, we would have a better map differential at that. Point. Toronto. Um, and anyone else who can get up to that level. So, uh, do you think I'm, that's accurate? Do you? Do you I agree. Yeah, that you think I, Atlanta Rain is the number three team in the league. I do. Um, I think for the <laughs> stage, I think for the stage they are. I do not necessarily yeah. like it, power rankings for the number three team, but in terms of like the way they have played so far right. this stage, I, I definitely think they've earned that position uh, up at the top. They've, I mean. Outside of, of last week, I mean, this all hinges on them, you know, 
continuing to do well and winning both of these games this week. For but sure. if that happens, they have been one of the few teams who has been like consistently, consistently strong from yeah. start to finish. And you know, there there haven't been a ton of those. Everyone has you know faltered here or there. Uh, and you know, Atlanta has just kind of been chugging along for the most part. Yeah, for sure. And I, I mean, we would be in such a different situation right now. We would be in a different conversation if we had held a point for maybe 10 seconds longer against Philly in week one. You know, like it's there's so many little things that Atlanta's played so well that um, the fact that we're competing for like the, the the at the end for the stage playoff seems almost surprising because of of how well a lot of these games went off. And I, I think that uh, that game against the Gladiators just kind of threw everything for a loop. But I agree. I think with the way they've been playing, Atlanta is um, absolutely a top five team. Uh, I would say, honestly, San Francisco, Atlanta, and maybe even Defiant all kind of exist in the same little sphere. You might add Fusion and, and Dallas to that as well. But um, yeah, I, I think they're a very strong team. And, and I, I think that reflects, uh, if we get that 5-2 um, uh, record, I think that will reflect basically on where I see us in the in the standings. And you know, I would I would really like to see them get up to the the number 3 slot because, you know, we talked about this earlier, that would set up a potential matchup against Vancouver in the second round of the playoffs. Uh, you know, assuming Vancouver ends up at in the 2 seed, which I I think is more than likely at this point. Um, but you know, we'll 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 get into all the the playoff scenarios next week. Uh, sure. And hope, and hopefully, fingers crossed, the those scenarios will include our Atlanta Reign. I mean, I think pretty much as long as they win one of these games and don't get blown out in the other, uh, they they should be in. Uh, I I, uh, I did a lot of, like I said, I spent like half an hour on this thing looking up different <laughs> scenarios. Um, there is, if I remember correctly, like we could get four rowed by one of the teams and go to map five and squeak by the other one and technically still get in the playoffs if the other games shake out strangely like it's right this it would be hard a, but it's doable right this is such a weird situation we find ourselves in with these teams um but i think as long as we if we win both we're fine if we play consistently well and and uh even one of them we we don't do as well on i think we're still fine i i think that in 90 percent of situations you're gonna see the rain in the stage playoffs um if not, I'm gonna feel sadder next week than I did this week. So yeah, some, something <laughs> will have gone horribly wrong. Right, I, right. I think more than like it kind of requires us to lose 4-0 to one of these teams, and I can't see either right. of those happening. Right, for sure. Uh, yeah, I, it, it's realistically we're gonna be in, but uh, with how the stage is shaking out, I don't feel comfortable at all <laughs> saying it's totally gonna happen. Because who the hell knows, man. Well, hopefully we will have some, some good news to talk about next week. But that is going to do it for us here today. Thank you for joining us. This has been another wonderful episode of Rain Over Me. As always, I am Shy Guy. He is Norchetto. That's me. We will uh, catch you next week, everybody. Let it rain, guys. I want to play you another one. Really? Yes. Really? Yes. Yes. I want to play you another recording. Really?